you join us in a beautiful bit of woodland and today uh, I wanted to come at you with a review of the Thermarest Parsec 20. It's a sleeping bag that I've been using for the last 12 months and after having given it some pretty thorough use including throughout the winter I thought it was time to let you guys know what I think of it, the goods and the bads. So we'll start off with the price this in the UK retails for right around £300 at the moment. In the US it's about $370. Obviously you can find different deals online depending on where you look. Uh, weight wise, it's not bad. This is the long version that I'm holding right here. And this comes in at, well the uh, Thermarest listed weight is one kilogram on the dot. On my scales it says 1.1. And if you go for the regular, which a lot of people probably will, then that uh, Thermarest listed weight is 910 grams. Expect it to probably weigh about a kilogram. Uh, seems like they're just slightly off, which is kind of normal for a lot of manufacturers, unfortunately. First thing to note about the bag with relation to sort of the quality and that's something that I really haven't loved about it is the compression sack. It's only a small factor and uh, you can use a different compression sack, which I would highly recommend and I have done. It is not waterproof and it is not amazing quality. So stuff sack, negative, but not the end of the world because it's just a stuff sack. The other important things to note are the temperature rating. They rate it or show it as a 20 Fahrenheit or minus six degrees Celsius bag. That is the limit. So the actual comfort rating for this bag is zero degrees Celsius, which is around 32 degrees Fahrenheit. 20F or minus six is the very limit of what you should find comfortable. Um, and I'll get onto that in a second and let you know a little bit more about my experience using the bag. But I think probably we'll crack it open and I'll show you what it looks like and tell you a little bit more about the sizing and my experiences with using it in colder weather as well as warmer weather. The bag has 800 fill power down, uh, pretty good quality. It's RDS, so responsibly sourced, and it's the Nick Wax hydrophobic down. So if it does get wet, it's gonna dry out a lot quicker. Hopefully you're not gonna get your bag wet, but obviously it also helps if you're using your bag over multiple days, it's gonna resist the moisture and the natural buildup when you're in your bag and you're sweating or breathing around it. Um, and that is really good. I mean, I like the Nick Wax, Nick Wax Hydrophobic Down. I think it's decent quality, 800 fill power. It's kind of the minimum level of quality that you want in a good bag. Um, and yeah, the, the down seems good. The temperature rating, just to touch on the temperature rating, and obviously probably people want to know, is it true to temperature rating? I would say it's a fair temperature rating for this bag. I have used this bag below minus six degrees. I used this bag in minus eight degrees ambient temperature. It was considerably colder with wind chill. And I slept in um, long johns, and I had on, uh, I think, a top layer with a fleece as well. Um, and it was warm enough. Um, that was obviously pushing the bag because that's way below its comfort limit. But I would say that at minus six, you should be pretty comfortable still in this bag. It's always gonna depend on you as a person. So, you know, this is just my experience with it. But I think the bag's relatively true to rating. Most of the time, you coming down to that limit, you're gonna wanna wear some extra clothing there. You're gonna wanna have socks on and like a couple of little, like even if it's thin layers, just to get it to that minus six level. I wouldn't be lying naked in this bag at minus six. I reckon you'd be really cold. <laughs> the, the design of the bag has a really simplistic hood. It works well, it's a good hood. It cinches nicely, no issues there. It's got one pocket on the outside over here. Slightly annoying. Oh, look, I've got earplugs in there. <laughs> just in case you don't want to hear anything um, it, it works well it's it's a nice enough place to store something like phone and in the winter I put things like batteries and stuff in there sometimes I'll just put them straight in the sleeping bag with me um, because it's on the outside of the bag it's kind of annoying sometimes to reach out it would be better if it was on the inside but again that's a minor gripe it's not huge the bag has a three-quarter length zip on it so you can open up and vent quite well it's a pretty decent zip. I haven't had any issues with snagging. No issues on that front. Quality of the zipper seems good. It's all, I believe it's YKK. Yeah, it's a YKK zipper, so good quality. Little snap clip at the top to hold that closed. The, the overall stitching quality on the bag is not brilliant, in my opinion. If you've had really high quality bags and you've bought stuff from cottage vendors or even other big established brands that um, sell top of the line sleeping bags. I think some of the bits here 
are not as good as they could be. Um, some of the stitching doesn't seem quite as good as it could be. The material they used, personally, I find that it, it sweats too much and it feels a little sticky. I really am a big fan, and I know Meg's behind the camera is too, of Pertex. Um, when you have sleeping bags or quilts that use Pertex, I tend to find it like Pertex Quantum, much softer against the skin and much more breathable. Whereas this I find a little bit too heavy, in, in my opinion. Uh, it's got a DWR finish that so will shed water on the outside, and I have seen it do that, so that's pretty cool. Um, otherwise, the other features that I really like on it, and this is quite a cool thing, it does add a little weight, but I have found it really good for sleeping bag comfort, is it has these little detachable loops that you push your sleeping pad through. So I use a Thermarest Neo Air X Therm most of the time, um, a large one actually, it's pretty big and it still fits through here and most sleeping pads you'll just be able to push through and this then means that when you're lying on your sleeping pad you can turn in your bag rather than your bag always twisting and turning everywhere and I have found that really good if you don't want it it unclips so you can save some more weight this bag that I ordered was the long in hindsight I would order the regular I'm 188 centimeters tall so about six foot two and this uh, the regular version of the bag they say is for users up to 183 centimeters. This bag, the large one, is for users up to 195 or 197 centimeters. I've slightly gone blank on that, but a lot taller. And I feel like there's too much room for me at six foot two in this bag, especially in winter when you want to not have to warm up such a big space. So if you're up to six foot one, six foot two, I'd probably say still go for the regular. If you're taller than that, congratulations for being that tall go for the next size up. One cool feature that the bag has is called the Toasis, and that is a registered trademark. That's quite a cool name. Uh, <laughs> Toasis foot box. So they've got a foot box sewn inside of the bag, which basically has additional down fill, and it's like a smaller area. So when you get into the bag, you can feel, you, you can push your feet into this smaller little foot box, and it helps your feet to warm up quicker. Kind of gimmicky, kind of cool i definitely like the name and it definitely does have additional downfill for your feet so your feet tend to stay warm and i found that pretty cool actually um, which was was nice so in conclusion with this bag it is a good sleeping bag it is relatively well made i think for the money you would expect a little bit more i also think for the weight you can get better bags on the market that's my honest opinion i bought this myself and i've used it for a year uh, and I think it is it is good. I would you know I wouldn't not recommend it, but I would say if you're going to consider buying this, you should have a look around because you can get more bag for your money, and you can probably get something that's lighter weight and just as warm. That's just the honest truth. All right, so that draws it to a conclusion on the review. I hope it was helpful for anyone that's watched. Please like, subscribe, and if you feel like checking out some of our images on Instagram at outdoor intrigue, that would be awesome. Otherwise, we'll see you out there.